So let me first uh, introduce this chapter, chapter number 22, Chemical Coordination and Integration. I was just talking about the fact that in our body, two systems take care of integration of body activity, body functions. So many things happen. Movement, locomotion, digestion, excretion, respiration, etc. So there has to be some central control and commanding center. <clears throat> the system that should be looking after coordination of their activities, such activities in the body. And we are having two such systems. One is endocrine system. Another one is nervous system. Nervous system uh, carries out communication, coordination and integration with the help of nerve impulses which run through neurons. The strategy on the part of nervous system is it is coordinating and integrating the various functions of the body with the help of the you know, nerve impulses that it conducts via its neurons. Whereas the endocrine system, it uses hormones which are secreted from endocrine glands so this sort of uh, coordination and integration which is carried out by the chemicals such as hormones that is done by endocrine system so when we say the chemical coordination and integration in body it will be the endocrine systems role that we are going to study in detail. There is a Greek word, hormone. Hormone is a Greek word. It means I stimulate. In Greek terminology, in Greek language, the word hormone, it means I stimulate. Well, definitely the hormones play the role of stimulators in our system. To stimulate certain activities in our body, hormones are required. So they play the role of stimulators. The, the Greek term hormone means I stimulate. Basically, body is being provided with some specialized glands, which are called as endocrine glands. Now you know that glands can be categorized into two, exocrine and endocrine, depending upon the uh, release of their contents. For example, exocrine glands release their contents into some lumen, into some duct, whereas endocrine glands are ductless glands. They always release their chemicals straight away into the blood. That's their, that, that, that is their speciality. And we call them as endocrine glands over there, ductless glands. The chemicals which they secrete, they are known as hormones. And straight away they will be secreted into blood. These hormones are, first of all, non-nutrient chemicals. 
some of them are lipid in nature some of them are polypeptide in nature basically they are chemicals specifically they are non nutrient chemicals when you say non nutrient means their role in the system is not to provide any nutrition they are not supposed to provide nutrition that the cells will take them and digest and get the nutrients no it's not meant for that purpose they are meant to convey certain message so they are messengers they are there for chemical coordination and integration so they have a specific role and that's why we say they are intercellular messenger not within the cell but between the two different cells from one cell to another one they convey the message so they are intercellular messengers over there and are secreted in a negligible amount negligible amount means a very small quantities in which they are required so minute negligible quantities in which they will be delivered in the system these chemicals which are non nutrient chemicals are intracellular messengers are secreted by the endocrine glands in a very negligible amounts over there and are conveyed in the body transported in the body via blood they are called as hormones through the blood they will reach to their target tissue they have to reach to their target tissue target cells target organ whichever one target cells target tissue or target organ and there they show their final effects over there there they are going to show their final effects so i repeat the ductless endocrine glands secrete non nutrient chemicals which are intercellular messengers named as hormones in very minute quantities they will be delivered into blood directly via blood they would be carried up to their destination that is a specific cell tissues or organ which are their target sites and there they exhibit certain effects here is a list of the prominent endocrine glands of our body of a human body an adult human body this includes pineal gland pineal or pineal gland hypothalamus pituitary thymus thyroid rather parathyroid these are the two different ones then thymus pancreas adrenal if it's a female body adult female body ovaries and if it's a male body testes optional either of that male female male testes and ovary respectively these are the main endocrine glands of our body of course there are certain parts of the body which are not glands or which are not big structures or organs as a whole contributing into the endocrine system but they may be doing some specific functions of the body and apart from that as a part time job side job they must be secreting certain hormones classic example if you can quote which you have studied an organ that can secrete hormone but by and large it is meant for some other major physiological functions of the body that organ is contributing into that do you know which one pancreas uh, of course pancreas is a typical uh, endocrine gland i am talking about kidneys 
the main function is excretion rela related functions isn't it but subsequent uh, the really like additionally it is also secreting certain hormones so it is not an endocrine gland as such but does secrete hormones so there are certain organs in body which are not endocrine glands but are secreting hormones can you name one more other than the kidneys already you have studied stomach isn't it gallo is right stomach mainly the digestive organ but yet it secretes hormones gastrin and other things so that was a profile of endocrine glands in brief now we're going to talk about endocrine glands one by one each one we're going to talk about we start with the first in this list that is pituitary in a head region associated with brain so called master gland named as pituitary gland let's talk about pituitary in detail this is the position of pituitary this gland is a pituitary gland closely associated with the brain closely associated with the brain actually the brain is uh, covered in a the whole brain is covered in a protective layer called cranium the sphenoid bone of the cranium sphenoid bone over here there must be a sphenoid bone covering the lower side of the brain in that there is one cavity this must be the cavity of a sphenoid bone hey agar sphenoid bone hai if this is the sphenoid bone here is this cavity of a sphenoid bone in which in this cavity in this cavity which is called as cella tarsica <clears throat> cella tarsica a cavity a depression in a sphenoid bone the one in which the one in which in this cavity our pituitary is located this pituitary gland our pituitary gland is located in this cavity which is called as cella tarsica which belongs to a sphenoid bone of the cranium pituitary is a gland which is firmly closely associated with the brain and brain is entirely protected by the cranium so along with the brain pituitary is also covered in the cranium a particular bone of the cranium called as a sphenoid bone which covers this part of the brain where pituitary is placed pituitary is slightly projected from the brain so there is a small cavity depression in the sphenoid bone wherein it is placed we call this cavity as cella tarsica so that is its location if you observe carefully the arrangement if this is the pituitary then this part of the brain is a hypothalamus part of the brain yahan pe hypothalamus aata hai ye wala portion particularly 
let's say this is hypothalamus. Let's say this is the pituitary. And can you make out that there is a connecting structure, a small tube-like structure, a stalk by which the hypothalamus and pituitary remain interconnected. This one is identified as infundibulum. This one is identified as infundibulum. Infundibulum, the stalk that is connecting hypothalamus to pituitary. Or rather, pituitary stays connected with the hypothalamus via stalk, which is known as cylindrical stalk, which is known as infundibulum. Boliye, clear hai concept. Yes. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Fine. Let me ask you. The part of the brain from where pituitary is projected. It is covered by which bone? That portion of the brain is covered by which bone? Shreya, correct. Sphenoid bone. Which cavity of the sphenoid bone in which pituitary is been lodged? Placed. Jugal correct. Is correct. Sela tersica. Very good reply. Which part of the brain having connectivity with the pituitary? The portion of brain to which the pituitary remains connected. It's called hypothalamus, Zanil and Rubra. Correct. And by which stalk these two retain their connectivity? She is correct, Gala is correct. In fundibulum. Infundibulum by which these two remain connected. That's a very good reply. Now we move forward. Again, I would like to show you the structure. Here is the one. This is hypothalamus. This is pituitary. And this connection is termed as infundibulum, the stalk by which the hypothalamus and pituitary stay connected. Now I'm going to explain in deep the structure of this uh, pituitary. Have a look at it. Now, <clears throat> This much is a pituitary, always remember. Because otherwise this is the stalk. So we got to focus upon this portion. In this pituitary, there are two portions. If I call this as A and if I call this other one as a B. One is called anterior pituitary. A is called anterior pituitary. And B is termed as posterior pituitary. Achha, iske liye term hai adenohypophysis. So the other one is called as neurohypophysis. If this one is called pars nervosa, and this is called as anterior pituitary adenohypophysis. This is called even as a posterior pituitary. This is called as anterior pituitary. So this one is further divisible into two. Pars distalis and pars 
इंटरमीडिया पार्स डिस्टेंस एंड पार्स इंटरमीडिया यहां पे भी दो पोर्शन हो जाते हैं दिस इज पार्स डिस्टेंस एंड दिस इज पार्स इंटरमीडिया सो एडिनो हाइपोफाइसिस इटसेल्फ इज डिवाइडेड इनटू एंटीरियर लोब एंड इंटरमीडिएट लोब anterior lobe and intermediate lobe that is the kind of a physical uh, separation that you can consider as such the gland itself is a one gland but for our convenience in study we have divided it into three parts pars distalis pars intermedia and pars nervosa usme se pars distalis is a anterior lobe pars uh intermedia is a uh, intermediate middle lobe and uh, pars nervosa is a uh, posterior lobe over there ach pars distalis and pars intermedia ko collectively kehte hai adeno hypophysis anterior pituitary whereas pure pars dis uh, nervosa ko kehte hai neuro hypophysis the posterior pituitary tell me is this clear what is another name of pituitary as such master gland correct shreya janel correct and another name aksha correct and another name yeah gala is correct hypophysical gland or hypophysis what is uh, another name of anterior lobe anterior lobe of pituitary what is another name of it no she are wrong zenil is right pars distalis what is the another name of middle lobe rishi right jugal right pars intermedia these two together make the anterior pituitary anterior pituitary ke do lobe ek anterior lobe aur ek middle lobe these two together make the anterior pituitary what is another name of anterior pituitary jugal right adeno hypophysis <clears throat> what about the second half of the pituitary if this one is adeno hypophysis the other half is called as which one yes right rishi is any let's say neuro hypophysis also the posterior pituitary posterior lobe what is another name of the posterior lobe pars nervosa zenil shreya correct you see different hormones are secreted from each lobe and that's why we have broken up into lobes otherwise what is the logic of doing that thing but each lobe secretes specific set of hormones for example pars distalis the anterior lobe secretes gh hormone tsh hormone lh hormone fsh hormone acth hormone and prolactin middle lobe secretes only one hormone named as msh msh the 
posterior lobe neurohypophysis or you may call pars nervosa or posterior lobe posterior pituitary meaning shell remain same it secretes two hormones oxytocin and adh also known as vasopressin already you have learned in a excretion related chapter in a kidneys functions regulation or osmo regulation aspect mein ye sab learn kiya hoga aapne so it's not a new thing for you or oh, ye jo vasopressin wala jo particularly hai adh anti diuretic hormone its role in urine formation you have already studied in detail yes so that, so yeah so that will be easy for you to understand now i'm going to talk about one by one the hormones of pars distalis in detail each one's full form each one's role i am going to explain let me start with the first in this list growth hormone the gh hormone over there <clears throat> gh stands for growth hormone some call it as a somatotropic hormone some call it as a somatotropic hormone also this hormone stimulates growth in the body uh, the the stature that we attain by the time of adulthood that is mainly because of the effects of growth hormone growth hormone is responsible for so many types of you know activities which are related with growth for example cell division and uh, bone mass increment length of the bone to be increased over there so many points at which our growth hormone even muscles growth over there in the body basically growth hormone is responsible for our growth right from our birth throughout the childhood till we reach to the adulthood by that time the growth stops your height doesn't increase after the age of 16 17 you know once you achieve the adulthood no longer you can increase your height further that means growth hormones that main job developing your stature that is been achieved remember so mainly this is the hormone which is responsible for growth its 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 normal secretion is going to lead to normal growth of the body sometimes when there is an abnormal secretion of this hormone quantity wise more than what is required that is called hyper secretion less than the requirement is called as hypo secretion hyper means over secreted hypo secretion means under secretion over secretion means more than what is required under secretion means less than what is required such abnormal secretions at times when occur it leads to major problems in the body related with the growth of the body for example one situation which is called as uh gigantism over secretion of growth hormone gigantism that is over secretion of growth hormone uh before puberty jaise 12 years 13 14 years puberty ka jo ek time period hota hai females mein 12 boys mein 14 before that that means since your childhood in a way isn't it since your childhood if you have a this is before adulthood or before puberty hyper secretion hyper means over or under secretion boli hyper secretion means over secretion isn't it so over secretion of growth hormone since the childhood before the puberty it will lead to what is called as a problem called gigantism a person will be giant gigantic huge normal person se bahut hi bade body wala person uska height body bahut hi stature bahut hi zyada bada hota hai bigger than a normal ordinary person 
जैसे यू नो एक जो एक कैरेक्टर है भीम महाभारत का एक कैरेक्टर है भीम यू नो अ जायंट कंपेयर टू अ नॉर्मल पर्सन जुगल नॉट दैट वन a giant person huge person okay so there are some characters about which we have studied and even in our routine life we can see that some people are abnormally tall and you know huge bodied individuals big one so they are called as giant individuals iske jaisa ek aur problem hai jaise gigantism hai yeah एक और भी है जिसको कहते हैं एक्रोमेगैली दोनों में एक चीज कॉमन है ओवर सिक्रीशन ऑफ जीएच ओवर सिक्रीशन ऑफ जीएच द ग्रोथ हॉर्मोन ओके बट हियर सिंस और बिफोर प्यूबर्टी दिस इज बिफोर प्यूबर्टी and this one occurs after puberty let's say that a person is having a high secretion of gh since the childhood before puberty so proportionate enlargement of all parts of the body and that will lead to a giant body formation overall a very huge personality but in acromegaly there is an over secretion of growth hormone but only after puberty so let's say that up to puberty person had a normal secretion of growth hormone suddenly the growth hormone secretion increased multifolds so body shows abnormal extra growth after achieving the regular stature regular growth of the body up till the puberty puberty tak normal growth uske baad abnormal extra growth ho jata hai That is a disproportionate growth. उसमें कुछ पार्ट बॉडी के ज्यादा ग्रो करते हैं कंपेयर टू दी अदर जैसे लिम्स बहुत ही ज्यादा ग्रो कर लेते हैं कंपेयर टू द रिमेनिंग बॉडी तो इस पर्सन के लिम्स बहुत ही ज्यादा एक्सटेंडेड होते हैं अच्छा हेड पूरा ग्रो करता है स्कल लेकिन लोअर जॉ सबसे ज्यादा ग्रो करता है तो लोअर जॉ थोड़ा बाहर निकल आता है उसको कहते हैं एक्रोमेगैली इसका एग्जाम्पल है खली आपने खली के बारे में सुना होगा यस सर दैट इज एन एक्रोमेगैली नॉट जायटिज्म जायटिज्म में क्या होता है प्रपोशनेट ग्रोथ एनलार्जमेंट ऑफ द बॉडी देन द नॉर्मल बिकॉज ऑफ हाइपर सिक्रेशन ऑफ जी एच सिंस द बर्थ जबकि खली के केस में क्या हुआ कि एक एज तक प्यूबर्टी तक नॉर्मल ग्रोथ और प्यूबर्टी आने के बाद सडनली उसमें एबनॉर्मल ग्रोथ हो गया एबनॉर्मल एनलार्जमेंट हो गया बॉडी का दैट इज अक्रोमेगैली अनदर फॉर्म ऑफ ओवर सिक्रीशन ऑफ जी एच एज फार एज अंडर सिक्रीशन इज कंसर्न हाइपोसिक्रीशन इज कंसर्न इट विल लीड टू वट इज कॉल्ड एज डिजम बिफोर प्यूबर्टी बिफोर प्यूबर्टी if you experience under secretion of growth hormone the body will be experiencing stunted growth and that is called as dwarfism ye na jaise unko bone kehte hain bone chote chote thingu ji kehte hain you know um, circus in which you know these people work you might have seen this thing in circus if you have heard about These days there are very few circus are left, but circus में ये होते हैं सुना है आपने छोटे छोटे ठिंगू जी बोने अच्छा इनमें एक स्पेशलिटी जो एक फीचर आपको याद रखना है कि या दे आर हैविंग एबनॉर्मल ग्रोथ ऑफ दी फिजिकल ग्रोथ ऑफ दी बॉडी means physically they have a abnormal growth but physiologically psychologically mentally they have a normal growth they can have a normal growth means what ki unka body chhota hai but they are mentally normal like any other human being 
they can reproduce so reproductively also they are normal so just physical growth is arrested not the physiological and the psychological growth so this is the dwarf individual over there is this clear yes is this clear hmm. so what about over secretion of gh since childhood which problem it will lead to gigantism isn't it what about over secretion of gh after puberty correct acromegaly and what about under secretion of gh since childhood dwarfism absolutely right very good reply from all of you we take a break for few minutes and then we will restart our lecture break for 5 minutes so we are discussing about the hormone secreted from this portion that is called anterior lobe of pituitary first hormone we have seen that is growth hormone second one that is prolactin uh this one particularly is active in females not in male members and that too during the pregnancy period so remember the specifications prolactin is working only in females and that too during the pregnancy stages this is to regulate the growth of mammary glands and formation of milk in them right from the early days of uh, you can say gestation the pregnancy this one's level goes on gradually increasing it will keep stimulating the mammary glands for increasing the growth of theirs and in the later part of the pregnancy towards the delivery point it will stimulate the uh, mammary glands to start formation of milk in them milk formation in them so these are the functions performed by prolactin another one tsh it stands for thyroid stimulating hormone basically it will stimulate the thyroid gland it will stimulate the thyroid gland to synthesize and secrete thyroid hormones jaise ye pituitary hai let's say anterior pituitary is anterior lobe it secretes thyroid stimulating hormone which goes and targets thyroid gland in our body ye bhi gland ye bhi gland ye hormone and in response this is gonna secrete thyroxine and other thyroid hormones so thyroxine ka synthesis hona and uska secretion hona from the thyroid is been regulated by thyroid stimulating hormone released from anterior pituitary see here comes the role of you know master gland why we call it as a master gland one by one you will see that different other endocrine glands their hormone synthesis and secretion is governed by pituitary itself to so, dusro ka secretion control kar raha hai isliye isko master gland ka designation mila hai see another one from uh, anterior pituitary anterior lobe hormone secreted is acth full form adrenocorticotropic 
हार्मोन एड्रिनो कॉर्टिको ट्रॉपिक हार्मोन दिस वन इज गोना टारगेट एड्रिनल कॉर्टेक्स एड्रिनल करके एक ग्लैंड है जिसके दो पार्ट्स है उसमें एड्रिनल कॉर्टेक्स पार्ट को ये स्टिमुलेट करता है एंड इन रिस्पॉन्स दिस इज गोना सीक्रिएट पर्टिकुलर सेट ऑफ हार्मोन विच आर कॉल्ड एज ग्लूकोकॉर्टिकॉइड्स ग्लूकोकॉर्टिकॉइड्स करके हार्मोन्स को रिलीज करना है कहां से एड्रिनल कॉर्टेक्स में से एंटीरियर पीटूट्रीज हार्मोन ए सी टी एच फुल फॉर्म एड्रिनो कॉर्डिकोट्रॉपिक हार्मोन आफ्टर बींग रिलीज इन ब्लड इट विल ट्रेवल थ्रू ब्लड एंड विल टारगेट द एड्रीनल ग्लैंड क्लोज टू द किडनीज एट दी अपर पार्ट ऑफ द किडनी then it will stimulate the cortex part of the adrenal to synthesize and secrete one set of hormones from it named as glucocorticoids glucocorticoids again as i was mentioning to you you can see pituitary is controlling another endocrine gland again this makes it to be known as master gland this makes it to be known as master gland chaliye what is the full form of tsh what's the full form of tsh jugal correct thyroid stimulating hormone what is the source what is the source shreya is absolutely wrong zenil is absolutely wrong rudra is correct pituitary gland anterior lobe of pituitary gland is the source of it from anterior pituitary the tsh the thyroid stimulating hormone what is the target of tsh gala is right thyroid gland and after receiving this what will be secreted from the thyroid gland synthesis and secretion of what thyroxine and other hormones of the thyroid gland simple another one ACTH. What is the full form? Jugal is right. Adrenocorticotropic hormone is the correct answer. What's the source of ACTH? Is it correct? Anterior lobe of the pituitary, anterior pituitary. Yes. What is the target of ACTH? Rudra, correct. Cortex region of adrenal gland. and which hormones shall be secreted on stimulation of it jugal correct glucocorticoids now before i take you to another one gonadotropins let me first explain about the structure of testes in a male testes here is the section of a testes male reproductive structure in which there are tubules like this what you can see tubules which are called as seminiferous tubules of course this topic is there in your 10th standard so it's not absolutely new for you am i right 
the term is not new for you. 10th standard reproductive system of human, it is already there, the mentioning of testes and spermatogenesis. Testes nahi hai term. Male reproductive organs, testes, female reproductive organs, ovaries, male reproductive system, female reproductive system. Is that not a part of your 10th standard syllabus? Sir, age hai, but a seminiferous tribules nahi badu na. Okay. प्रोसेस विच इज कॉल्ड एज परमैटोजिनेसिस in which they produce sperms male reproductive structures sperms are produced over there within the testes these tubules which are known as seminiferous tubules are the sites where spermatogenesis occurs and where the sperms are produced bole yahan tak clear testes ke andar tubules hote hai they are called as seminiferous tubules in them spermatogenesis process takes place by which sperms are is that clear okay sir the child is clear so i'm moving forward so like let like these are the tubes but can you see that there is some space in between and these spaces in between the seminiferous tubes it has Uh, this is interstitial space, and there are groups. See carefully. Sir, your voice is cracking. Hello. Hello. Sir, party is on. Sir, company is on. Sir, company is on. Yeah, I'll, I'll just 